Care workers go to great pains to protect the safety of those they care for, sometimes at the expense of their own health and well-being. This is one reason why care workers in Nova Scotia experience the highest rate of work-related injuries and time loss in the province, and it's something we need to change. We know that when steps are taken to protect the safety of the care worker and the safety of the person being cared for, everyone wins, as fewer care workers are injured, meaning they're at work providing quality care to those who need it. Care tasks that require people to be moved or repositioned are a leading cause of injuries to care workers. This video, one in a series focusing on safe handling and mobility techniques, was created to demonstrate recommended safe handling and mobility related work practices and techniques. Although the scenarios depicted are facility based, application to the home and or community environments are also included. Throughout the video, think about how the care worker interacts with the person receiving care and their coworkers, and how they use PACE, a point of care mini risk assessment to help ensure the safety of everyone involved. Before we watch the care worker help Vanessa move from her bed to a chair and apply compression stockings, please note that the care worker has already checked Vanessa's care plan and understands her safe handling and mobility needs. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning. How are you? Pretty good. Oh, I see that you spill a little bit of water. Oh, I'm sorry about that. That's okay. I'm just going to grab a towel and I'll clean it up. Okay. Okay. The care worker used PACE to identify and control a hazard in the environment before starting care and to verify Vanessa's ability to communicate and her level of agitation. I'll just put this towel in the laundry and I'll come right back. Okay. Okay. Are you ready to get up for the morning? Yes. I'll put the rail down here. I'll get you to sit up and swing your feet around. Wonderful. All right, let's get those compression stockings on. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. The care worker uses a dolphin donner to put on Vanessa's compression stockings. The donning comb firmly attaches to a flat surface by a suction cup, making it easy to load the stocking onto the dolphin donner sleeve. The dolphin donner helps to reduce the amount of effort exerted and allows for safer body positioning, reducing the risk of injury for the care worker and making it more comfortable for Vanessa. To apply a stocking, the care worker takes note of where the heel of the stocking is once it is rolled up on the gel sleeve. They then position the sleeve over Vanessa's toes, making sure the toe of the stocking is snug before rolling the stocking up her leg. I'll put this away. Let's get your slippers on. It is important that the care worker checks the safe handling and mobility logo posted in Vanessa's room to ensure that it reflects her safe handling and mobility plan. In environments where a logo may not be displayed, for instance in a home setting, it's vital that you review and understand the safe handling and mobility plan before providing care. I'll just grab the transfer belt and we'll get you up, okay? Okay. All right, let's get this on. It's a little snug. All right, Vanessa, I'm going to put the bed down so your okay. feet are closer to the floor. All right. Can you lift your bum up a little bit for me? Yeah. Maybe just a little bit. Perfect. And then on the count of three, we're going to stand up. One, two, three. Wonderful. Perfect. Here, I'll take this off. Then I'll come back in just a moment to get you ready for breakfast. Okay? That's good. All right. Now that Vanessa is sitting comfortably in her chair, let's do a quick review. Before providing care, the care worker checked Vanessa's care plan to confirm her documented mobility status and safe handling and mobility plan. They used PACE to scan the environment for hazards upon entering the room and talk to Vanessa to verify her ability to communicate and her current mood. Using the environmental scan, the care worker saw the water on the floor, and she took the time to wipe it up before helping Vanessa. The care worker also checked the safe handling and mobility logo, used a transfer belt, and checked Vanessa's ability to help with the transfer, cueing and guiding Vanessa as she stood up and moved to the chair. Excellent care provided in a way that protects both the care worker and Vanessa. 
But what happens if things don't go as expected? Let's rewind to see how the care worker adapts when Vanessa's physical abilities aren't what they usually are. Remember, when a care worker identifies a need to alter a safe handling and mobility plan, they can and should be using a technique that is safer than that outlined in the care plan. How was your sleep last night? You seem a little wobbly today. Yeah, I didn't sleep good last night. Oh, that's not good. This is a little snug. There, can you lift your bum up for me? No? <laughs> Alright, I'm going to call for some extra help. Okay. And we'll get some help to get Jeff over into the chair. Okay. Okay? Say hi, hi, Vanessa. How are you today? Hi, Heather. Hi. We just need a little extra a little help. help. Rough night? Yes. Yes, you can okay. sleep well. Okay. Do you want to do the count, Lindsay? Yeah. I'm going to take your hand and we're going to stand up on three. Okay? Okay. Okay. One, two, three. Wonderful. That's okay. great. That's good. Lindsay's going to look after you and I'll see you later on. Okay. Okay. We'll get this off. And I'll come back in a minute and get you ready for breakfast. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's review what you just saw. After noticing Vanessa is less stable than usual and checking her ability to move from a seated position from the bed, the care worker determines that Vanessa requires more assistance than outlined in her care plan. The care worker knows that they are always able to use a technique that is safer than what is specified in the safe handling and mobility plan when the situation calls for it. In situations where a second care worker may not be available, for instance in home care, the care worker should not proceed with the transfer, but ask Vanessa to lie back down in bed to ensure her safety. They can then proceed to provide care in bed, or if it's safe to do so, postpone care until Vanessa is more stable. If another individual, like a family member, is present, the care worker should follow their employer's procedure for having others assist with a transfer or a repositioning task. In all cases, the care worker should document the changes in Vanessa's mobility status and how care was provided. In the video, we saw very effective teamwork between the two care workers, between the care workers and Vanessa, and a clear countdown before assisting Vanessa to stand. When the two care workers assist Vanessa to stand, we see that one of them is grasping the strap on the transfer belt, while the other is grasping the belt directly. This is good practice, as neither care worker should slip a hand through the strap on the belt. Having said that, we also see that the transfer belt rides up on Vanessa's torso, as it isn't fitted snugly around her waist. And once she is standing, the care workers immediately begin to assist her to the chair. It would have been better, safer practice if once Vanessa is standing, the care workers had stopped to make sure she is stable and to adjust the fit of the transfer belt before moving her to the chair. This video has demonstrated some of the most important steps care workers should follow when moving or transferring someone they are caring for. One of the most important steps takes place before care begins. That being, checking the care plan and understanding the safe handling and mobility plan before care begins. Using a pre-care check, like PACE, is also vital. Care workers note that the abilities of people they care for can change from day to day, hour to hour, and that new hazards often appear in the care environment. PACE helps care workers recognize when adjustments need to be made to how care is provided, so that they can deliver care safely while protecting their own health and well-being and the safety of those they care for.